So, what is music compression? Well, if you've spoken to anyone who's really into making music, or maybe they're just someone who's a really avid fan of listening to and talking about music, you've probably heard music compression talked about before, and most likely in a fairly negative light. Now, it does have its good and bad sides, and before we get on to explaining what it is and what those sides are, it's worth remembering that music compression is probably a lot more common than you may otherwise realise, in that if you've listened to any contemporary music in the last three or four decades, it's pretty much 99.99% certain that it had some degree of compression on it. And furthermore, on top of that, TV, movies, um, if you listen to an interview, my voice right now, compression is used to stabilize pretty much all audio that you hear published in any environment. So there is good use for it and good reason. So anyway, we're gonna explain what it is and then we're gonna to listen to some examples to try and see how it can be used in a good and bad light. So first we'll have a little look at this waveform here. Now, you probably already have seen a waveform in some capacity before. So you'll know that those taller peaks, they are the loud parts and the bits in between are quieter parts. Now, you'd be also probably not too surprised to find that with those fairly short, sharp, regular, loud parts, that's a drum beat. So we've got a beat happening here and we've got some underlying music underneath it, which I've chosen to go with some fairly held notes um, so that you've got a real contrast between, like I say, the sharp, impactful beats and the more held melodic notes. This is just to give like the most optimal example of how compression works, but obviously there are varying intricacies uh, depending on the piece of music you're listening to. So the best way of thinking of what compression does is imagine this like being an extremely bumpy road and compression is a car driving along that road and it's the car suspension. So when you get to the loud bumps, the compression works and it basically has the effect of lessening the bumps and therefore increasing the quieter bits. So the loud bits come down and the quiet bits come up to meet it. I'm just going to quickly show you a frame of what this looks like after the compression's done. And you can see that's effectively like what suspension would do for your car. It's smoothed out the ride. Therefore, the sound is more consistent overall for its volume. But the result, unsurprisingly, is although it sounds more full, it does end up having less impact per note or beat. So anyway, here are some examples. Firstly, we're going to listen to this recording with no compression. Let's have a little listen to that first of all. Now we're gonna to listen to it with some compression. You hear it sounds less jumpy, less impactful, but actually a bit more full and a bit more rounded. Now what we're gonna do next is use what I would say is too much compression in this particular example. You notice that what happens is that it now sounds very rounded, very rounded indeed, but totally lacking in any impact. So every time a beat occurs, it just kind of gets squashed into the overall sound and everything crushes down. Like I say, remember that car suspension example, everything gets squashed down when the impact comes in. So let's have a little listen to that now. So the judgment of the engineers, the sound engineers, is really important to working out how much of this is required, how much compression is required. And they have to consider things like the content, the number of sounds happening at any one time that are gonna be squashed down on top of each other. And of course, what environment is likely to be heard in, which is something that a lot of people don't consider. Um, there are many factors as well that go on top of this, like uh, equalizing and the way that the song's mixed and other ways that you, know, you can sort of affect compression, use compression. But for this lesson, we're gonna keep it to the simple and popular definition of just what happens when you overall compress a whole track. So when is it good and when is it bad? Well, effectively compression works best if you're listening to music in a loud environment. Now think about this as listening to music on headphones usually. Uh, on a train or walking around a loud town. Also if you're listening to music in a club, 
um, music that's maybe more meant for the radio. So it could be heard in the background in maybe a restaurant or maybe you're doing the housework while it's playing. You don't effectively lose any of the quieter sounds beneath the overall ambient sound of what's happening around you. So to give you an example, imagine you've got silence, you've got the sound of what's going on around, and then your music, anything which is louder, any beats that appear to be louder than the ambient sound, they're going to be quite clear, but anything that's quieter, you're going to have to hear it over the sounds around you. So effectively, compressing the sound makes everything more audible. Now, if you want a good test of this, one way you can actually do it is if you download, say, an old piece of jazz music is usually the best way of doing it. Something from a good few decades ago that will have no compression on it whatsoever. And then stick it on some headphones, listen to it first, First of all, on a train or in a cloud, crowded environment, and then take it home and listen to it again in quiet. And you'll notice loads of quiet sounds that you probably not even noticed in it before because they were just hidden underneath the ambient sound. And you probably didn't even realize that you weren't hearing them. So basically compression makes more of a stable listening experience. And it also makes all of the sounds come across with I'd say a sort of more equal level of importance. Now, of course, the bad side of compression is when it's used on music that's maybe more intricate or designed to be listened to more carefully in more of a controlled environment, perhaps. Um, I mean, one example that we can use for that is if you think about sort of a very gentle, non-distorted piece of music, uh, classical being a good example. I mean, classical is one of the prime examples where you don't really get compression. But let's think about something like a soft piece of acoustic music or something where you've got a gentle played a mandolin or a piano or something of that kind. Now, one of the things that gives the sound so much personality is the way that the notes decay. You get the whole tone, the way that everything fades from the initial impact of the note and it fades down. So if you had compression, the note wouldn't really fade down. It would come in with an impact and then the compressor would be trying to hold it up to a certain level until it couldn't anymore. So it would change the, the feeling of the music. However, that can work inversely. And Compression can also be bad on music that has too many sounds happening at once, where there's a lot of things happening, because you've got too much being squashed down on top of each other and everything in vying for the equal level of importance just kind of sounds crowded and nothing comes through with enough definition to really be heard and to stand out. So in conclusion, is compression a good or a bad thing? Now, as I said before, compression can be used in many different ways, but just talking about this main and most popular example of compression when it's used on the entirety of a track, well, I would say that probably it is a good thing. And that's why, as I pointed out, almost all contemporary music does actually use it. It does have the effect of making music sound more palatable, easier to listen to, and can also make it nicer if you want to listen to music on the go. It is basically a good thing, but it can be used very badly. And that's the problem. There's two factors that you really have to take into whether compression is good or bad, um, which is obviously, first of all, how the engineer sees the piece of music is coming across and how you want to listen to it. For example, if you're listening to your favorite band and they've got a song and the producers and the engineers are thinking, this is one we want for radio play, they're likely to put more compression onto it. Because like I say, if you're playing to a wider audience, there's going to be more people who are listening to it more casually and in more of a relaxed environment. And therefore, they're going to want that compression to make it more palatable. However, for you as a fan of the band, you might well disagree and find that the song lacks some of the impact, personality and the intricacy and detail that happens when the sounds are left alone. So often you'll find if your favorite band has gone from being say very independent and slowly raised up into more popularity, then you'll find that their songs become more and more compressed and possibly as a lot of people say, more dead sounding, the more popular the band gets because obviously they're now trying to, the engineers are trying to make the song appeal to more of a wider listening environment. So compression, it's always gonna be around. It's always gonna have its good sides. It's always gonna have its bad sides. It's always gonna make some people wanna listen to a song and some people think you've killed the song. Ultimately, though, it's something that mainly comes down to the difference between you as the listener, how you perceive the music and how the engineer perceives the music. I mean, obviously, one of the prime po points where we talk about compression is in rock music because the engineers, they think rock, you want it to be loud, loud, loud. But a lot of the people listening to the songs want to hear all the intricacies of how it's played. And that's only going to come by allowing a little bit of leeway for the sounds to have more personality, have a little bit more bite. 
However, a popular audience who might want to listen to just a popular roaring rock song, they just going on it to be as loud as possible as well, is always going to be that split. I think the best thing we can do is just hope that the engineers go for a middle ground as much as possible. Anyway, I hope that explained compression to you a little bit better. If you want me to go into more detail and explain more things about how compression is used in other parts of mixing and designing music, then I will do that. But for now, ciao, ciao.